Hello everyone. Uh, we have established a center in pediatric immunology at Aster CMI Bangalore over the last seven years. And in this brief video, I thought I'll just touch upon our journey at Aster CMI, how we were able to establish a center for a rare disease and how we could help some of our patients with primary immune deficiencies. Now, I was trained at PGI Chandigarh, uh, which is the only center in India at the moment which offers a DM program in pediatric immunology and rheumatology. And I was quite fortunate to be trained under Professor Surjit Singh at PGI Chandigarh way back in 2014 to 2016. And subsequently, having trained in the science of immunology, I moved to Bangalore in 2017. And as I speak today in July 2024, over the last seven years, we have been able to diagnose 471 patients with primary immune deficiencies, which are now better known as the inborn errors of immunity. We have performed more than 50 bone marrow transplants in patients with immunodeficiencies. And I must say we must be amongst the top three centers in the country to transplant immunodeficiency disorders because our focus has been immune deficiencies. Now, I wondered what, what made this possible because diagnosing 450 plus cases with immune deficiencies in a single center is, is a significant thing, I believe, because these are rare diseases. And then I think there are five important things that made this happen. One was building the lab facilities, raising awareness amongst physicians, pediatricians, and the general public about these diseases, creating an ecosystem, not only medical, but social and financial to ensure we diagnose these patients and we can provide them therapy in the form of transplants. And then yes, research and publications, and then training the next generation to ensure that uh, more and more patients get diagnosed. Now, I remember in Feb 2017, when I joined Aster CMI Hospital Bangalore, we declared uh, this as a new center to treat rare diseases called primary immune deficiencies. That was where our journey just began. And this was possibly the first center in the state of Karnataka to offer full-scale services for the diagnosis and therapy of primary immune deficiencies. There were uh, significant challenges, I must say, because there was complete lack of awareness about these diseases. Uh, there were no lab facilities that could perform advanced immunological testing. And obviously, there was very little experience with transplants involving immune deficiencies. Now, to set up the lab facilities, the very first thing I did was I spoke with a private lab. And with their partnership, we set up something called Primary Immune Deficiency Panel, PID panel, just to make it simple. And this panel encompassed the serum immunoglobulins, the lymphocyte subsets, and the NBTDHR. And let me tell you, the panel became so popular that in the first few months, it was hardly me or a few physicians who were writing this test or ordering this test. And today, hundreds of pediatricians in Southern India ask for this panel, just reflecting rising awareness amongst pediatricians about these conditions. We subsequently expanded the scope of lab evaluation, added CD18 and 11 assay to diagnose leukocyte adhesion deficiency. Comprehensive lymphocyte subset assay was brought in picture because we thought we should assess the thymic output to diagnose the hypomorphic forms of severe combined immune deficiencies. And then obviously, in the last few years, there has been, uh, I would say, ready access and availability of whole exome sequencing with several labs coming up with this test helping us diagnose molecularly most of our patients. Awareness, yeah, in 2017, there was definitely a lack of awareness, both in public and in the medical fraternity. To increase awareness in the public, we wrote a lot of articles, I would say, newspaper articles, uh, basically like one of this, is your child constantly unwell? Highlighting if your child is unwell, having recurrent infections, think of an immune deficiency. In April 2017, we celebrated the World PI Week uh, and we invited a lot of our patients. And with these patients, we contacted the media and spoke about these diseases, thereby again spreading awareness in the community. Well, it is equally important to uh, ensure that these patients are diagnosed by pediatricians who are the first caregivers for most of our children. And that is where I brought out these small videos on individual immunodeficiency diseases as a YouTube channel. And this definitely... Uh, I, I've, I've seen a lot of pediatricians picking up phone and saying, yes, we watch this video. We think this is a disease. Can we refer this child? And this YouTube channel has helped us diagnose many patients. Well, diagnosing was not only important, it was equally important to raise funds because some of these patients need immunoglobulin injections. 
which are costly injections. And that is where we approach, this is one of our initiatives where we approach the Canadian International School and the fourth grade students visited our hospital, met some of our uh, patients, and then they went online and uh, set up campaigns and raise funds. And let me tell you, with the funds raised by these young kids, they supported uh, 20 patients with free IVAG at our hospital for the next one year. I think such kind of campaigns have helped us not only raise awareness, but raise funds for treating our children. Subsequently, as I was talking in a lot of conferences about immune deficiencies, pediatricians often would ask, is there a small book which we can easily refer and diagnose these conditions? And I thought we have large voluminous books on immunology, but we hardly have small handbooks, which can be an easy source of referral for pediatricians, for, uh, for medical students. And that is where this book, Primary Immune Deficiency Made Simple, was penned. And this was uh, released almost four years back. And I must say this has been received very well by, by pediatricians, by young medical residents. And nowadays they regularly pick up this book and diagnose primary immune deficiency. What is the result? Not just rising awareness, increasing number of patients being diagnosed and treated. As you can see in 2017, we diagnosed 39 cases. Subsequently, each year the number went up. In COVID, yes, the numbers dipped naturally, but then 2022, 76 new cases were confirmed, received a confirmed diagnosis. And last year, the number was 127. So as you can see, in the last year, every month, more than 10 patients were diagnosed with immune deficiency. Now, this is the number that is diagnosed. The number that is referred is, I would say, 10 times more than this. But this is the number which is diagnosed. And most of them have a molecular diagnosis. And that is how I think the number is increasing. And this is just going to keep increasing. Well, the next step was to offer bone marrow transplant. And we thought when we should transplant these patients, let's get the best on board. And that is where we approached Dr. Fulvio Porta from Italy, who has established two BMT centers in Italy, performed more than 400 BMTs only in immunodeficiencies. And under his guidance, we initiated the BMT program. And in fact, uh, along with Dr. Chetan Ginigiri, who is the head of the Department of Pediatrics, uh, I visited the center at Brescia in Italy to to have a first-hand experience as to how these patients are being treated there in one of those centers, which has got a lot of experience. I must thank the management here, uh, Dr. Azad Mupan, our chairman, uh, who has always supported us. And as you can see in this picture, along with Fulvio Porta and Dr. Chetan, there is Dr. Stalin and Dr. Ogram, our BMT physicians who have learned the science of BMT along with us and transplanted uh, many of these kids. Well, BMT is, I must say, a, a costly procedure where we need to raise funds and support children. So that is where we thought patient expenditure should come down. Crowdfunding platforms, companies which provide CSR funding, and then a lot of commitment from our hospital. And then there is a foundation called Astrosic Kid Foundation. All this coming together, we could we could raise funds and transplant these children on the model of low cost, high volume, and high reward model. Well, these children sometimes are extremely sick and need multidisciplinary care, where I must thank our pediatric ICU, which has been led by Dr. Chetan and Dr. Harish, uh, which has helped us uh, save these children when they became critically unwell. And the result is our success stories. This is one of our first patients with skid that received a transplant. <clears throat> this is the patient with leukocyte adhesion deficiency that was transplanted. These are some more success stories. And this is a recently uh, transplanted child with leukocyte addition deficiency, which is doing well. Um, this is one of our complex transplants on C1Q deficiency, a child who came from all the way from Mauritius to receive a bone marrow transplant. And over the last six years, we have transplanted more than 50 children with primary immune deficiencies. And I'm sure this number will only go up. On the way, we have received some recognitions. We have been recognized as a center of excellence by a US body called the FPID. Uh, the Foundation for Primary Immune Deficiencies. We also have been recognized as a center with an expert immunologist by the Jeffrey Model Foundation US. We are also a sentinel site for the IVDPV, that is the immunodeficiency associated vaccine derived par, uh, polio virus surveillance by the government of India. We run a unique fellowship program in pediatric immunology in BMT and some of our trained fellows have already relocated to their places and spreading this science. Yes, science has to progress and this should encompass 
a lot of research and publication. And this is our, been our research output we have been publishing. Despite being in a private setup, more than 50 papers have been published in the last six years, some of them in international journals with impact factor of more than five. We have partnered in several industry-sponsored trials and multi-centric trials resulting in publications in peer-reviewed journals. And some of these trials have helped provide us IVIG to our patients. The future is bright. Majority of our immunological diseases are genetic in origin and gene therapy and gene editing are under research for these conditions. What we believe is to build a center of excellence in immunology, we shall be able to build this center when we incorporate the upcoming science. By embracing these innovative treatment modalities, our center is poised to become a true quaternary care facility in the days to come. Now, the way we have started looking at diseases has completely changed. New diseases, newer paradigms have set. For example, auto-inflammatory diseases this is a completely set of uh, new set of di genetic diseases where there is inflammation mediated by defects in the innate immune response. And treating such conditions has now opened up newer horizons for targeted therapy and personalized medicine. And we are looking at the future of medicine where we are really looking to give targeted therapy in terms of biologic small molecules. And definitely there are more opportunity for more trials and more research. More and more, we understand science. We have understood there is immunological basis for almost every disease. And this is because of advancements in molecular science and immunogenetics. The way we understand human diseases is changing in a revolutionary way. And that is why disease is treated by several specialities. Maybe it's neurology, pulmonology, hematology, have immunological basis. And that's why immunologists working with all such specialities, we shall be able to provide such targeted therapy. And that is why I say there is a true need of collaboration between physicians, between specialists, between uh, medical specialists and the industry so that we can provide optimum care to our patients. Well, this is what is the future of immunology. It's not just immunodeficiencies and transplants. It's looking at newer mechanisms of diseases and providing targeted therapy. It's looking at research where we can, pro uh, we can do trials, we can do research and we do more publications and that provides us more and more visibility. And that is what we have been doing over the last seven years. Yes, setting up labs and a referral lab with all the kinds of advanced lab facilities is what we are looking at in the next couple of years. Thank you once again for watching this video. And this is our brief journey. And I basically made this video as to highlight how we all uh, a uh, lot of my young colleagues are now being trained at pediatric in pediatric immunology and I wish them all the best and I'm sure we all can set up such centers in different parts of country and spread the science of immunology. Thank you.